Hi, thanks for joining us for another episode of Inquiring Minds. I am Steve Harper, and with me as always is my amazing co-host, Donna Carlin. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, and it's interesting that you should ask that question. I'll go back to that in a sec. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really good. I mean, it, uh, any day that I get an opportunity to talk to Donna Carlin, it's a good day. It's a positive, uplifting, thought-provoking, incredible day. So today's awesome. Okay. All no pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. <laughs> so what it. are we talking about today? Talking about you know how you're doing. If taking care of yourself means letting someone down, then let someone down. <laughs> this this is going to be a uh, interesting and fun conversation. So where did you? This is this is a quote, right? This is a a quote that it's you a picked quote. up. I, I saw it online somewhere. I can't tell you specifically where because. These things happen. I quickly jot them down and uh, go on to whatever I'm reading or doing at, at the time. <clears throat> so I'm not quite sure where I got this one, to tell you the truth. But it really resonated with me because for so many years, you see, I get smarter as I get older. For so many years, I did things that um, I thought would make things easier for other people. Sure. And it impacted my health, ultimately. This no more, you know, taking care of self isn't selfishness in, in the sense that it's self-centeredness. It's it's really taking care of self that that definition of selfishness, you know, put your mask on before you help someone else on an yeah. airplane kind of thing. And I, I really think that the best way that we can help people is for them to witness how we take care of ourselves. Yep. And I have literally, it's not a New Year's resolution. I don't do those things. My intention is always to make sure that I am um, taking care of my health, that I am getting enough sleep, that I'm not uh, putting myself at risk because I give too much of myself when people ask for, for help or favors or everything else cons consistently. And I always say, yes, there's there's less and less time for me and for me to take care of myself. So, you know, one of my questions to you and, and our listeners pretty much is, how good are you at saying, no, I can't do this for you. I might be able to do this, but I can't do this. Or, you know what, I'm really depleted. I'm not taking anything on right now. I'll get back to you or you get back to me in a month or two and let's see if the status quo has changed for now. Respectfully. No. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the answer for me is uh, until probably the last few years, I have been really poor at that. Um, you know, sort of as a, a natural helper, uh, someone that always uh, appreciates somebody having the confidence that I might have the right answer or I could do something for them and them coming. I always looked at it from the perspective of God, that's a, that's a big ask for somebody to do it. And then you kind of, when you step back and you realize, you know, there are givers and takers. In fact, we, um, we covered something similar about this recently for what we're doing with the ripple membership in that you really have to evaluate sort of situations and people. And, the, you know, there, there are people that are natural givers that almost end up giving too much of themselves away, which I was guilty of. And that wasn't leaving enough um, for anybody else. And it wasn't leaving certainly enough for me in the environments where I needed to excel or exceed uh, expectations. And that was a challenge and it, and it really cost me in a, in a lot of ways. And that was a problem. And then you look at the people that are often constantly coming to you with the requests or the need and the propensity of us to step up and want to help them, especially as coaches. That's what we always want to do. We want to contribute and add value to people's lives. And the, what we don't realize at the time that there are some people that just don't appreciate it. They'll take advantage of that at every chance they can, can get. And when you start looking at this, like, you know, is this really... Is, is this someone that is, is truly going to appreciate what I'm doing for them? If they're making a legitimate ask, is there, you know, are they going to appreciate it? And uh, is it something that I really feel compelled to do? When you start looking at these things and being honest with yourself and you realize how much of you it's taking when you do it, 
uh, it's really critical. And, and the reason I, I frame it that way is, you know, you're, it's not just the time or your expertise or the energy it takes. It's literally the physical and mental impact it has on you. When you are now absorbing somebody else's stress, maybe it's a job change, maybe it's a open a door and help them get, you know, the right contact. You're owning that, which adds a whole layer of stress and anxiety and a lot of sense frustration to already everything else that you're dealing with yeah. in your own life. And that's the problem because those things have a cumulative effect and they rack up and they come back in ways to, you know, cause you, you know, physical and emotional pain sometimes because you're overextending yourself and there's just not enough water left in the well. You know, one, one of the things that we could ask ourselves is if I engage with this or contribute or, or honor whatever's asked of me, will I make things better than they were before? Will I make things better, not only for the individual asking or the organization or the situation, how will I learn and grow at the same time? Hmm. It's not what's in it for me. It's how will it impact me? There's a huge difference. That is a huge difference. So I, I wanted to clarify that, you know, for our listeners. And if now when somebody asks me for a favor of some sort, say it's a business favor, somebody that I don't really know that well, who's met me through me giving a, a talk or something like that. And they ask me, could I have a half an hour of your time? In the past, I might have said yes, because I end up talking to everybody after I do a speaking gig anyway. This time, I actually shocked myself in my response. And I said, what are you going to do with what you learn from me in that half hour? <laughs> and they were really taken aback. Well, I just wanted to pick your brain. Okay, to what end? What are you going to do with what I, I share with you, the time that I'm going to invest yeah. invest yeah exactly in this and if they don't have an answer i wish them well and ask them to consider when they ask this kind of favor or the ask of yep. someone with absolutely no idea of what they're going to give back in this is what i learned from implementing what you shared this is you know how you can take what i learned and use it with other clients whatever it is a ripple effect of sorts. If it's, I just want to have your time because I'm curious, sorry, but time is my most cherished and pre uh, treasured uh, commodity. Yep. Right. That's your so asset. That's, that's your one and only asset. That's right. So I learned to say no. And I'm getting this, well, people are shocked. Like I'm getting <laughs> contacted on LinkedIn constantly to sell something to me or to connect with me and my answer is not just to connect. Why do you want to connect with me? What would you like to do with that connection? If I don't hear anything back, nothing. If all I hear from people I am connected with is something to sell me, they're no longer connected with me. I am mm -hmm. really now honoring my time and my attention and putting it towards that, which will make a difference. That's great. It feels really, really good. So, you know, uh, taking care of yourself. If it doesn't meet someone else's criteria of what they want. That's on bye. them. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it, you know, it's interesting because it goes back to the, uh, the thing that uh, you and I've talked about a number of times on past episodes is, you know, most people can't say no because they're afraid of what people's opinions of them would be right a after the fact and what's empowering and has been for me personally is their opinion of me saying no is really none of my business. <laughs> you know, like you've said yep. before. And the great thing about that is, you know, you don't have to be a, you know, difficult. You don't have to be a, you know, jerky about how you respond. It's just, you know, I don't have the capacity or the time to do that right now. And, and I appreciate you thinking of me. I appreciate, you know, the confidence that you're trying to place in, you know, that interaction for 30 minutes or to pick my brain or what you think I can bring to your situation. But, you know, I, I just don't have the time to do that. Or if I do have the time and I'm really committed to, you know, sort of driving that point home is I am paid for my time and my expertise. Would you like to book a, a session with me? And, and uh, uh, that has been really, really powerful. I, I um, This came up for me recently. I just booked a keynote for um, a conference that's coming up later this year. And 
uh, the person that originally connected me said, oh, he would be great. This would be fantastic. And the person that reached out to me had zero expectation of paying for a speaker, a keynote speaker. And I said, so you're willing to pay me to fly clear across the country and you're going to put me up at a hotel room. And uh, I appreciate that. That's great. You know, I love seeing Orlando. However, you know, at the end of the day, you want me to bring my experience and my expertise and you want me to motivate and inspire. These are all, all their words in terms of requirements. And you want me to do that on what? Faith? And, you know, the fact that somebody in that audience might really benefit, you know, from the message and might want to hire me for their own company. Yeah. I don't have the time to do that. I just simply do not. I, I have got to say, I appreciate the inquiry and I would love to work with you, but I get paid for my time and my expertise. And it was, you know, it was interesting because I think it was almost as if they were thinking they could sort of talk me into doing this because it would be better for me and I would benefit from it potentially, but I've done those before and they never materialize. Right. And I believe people know when you're being paid and you are there and, and you're delivering your value, people pay for that expertise because they respect what you bring to the table. And so I basically said, you know, if, if that was not a, an option, then, you know, I certainly appreciated the inquiry, but it's just not something I'm prepared to do. And they were like, well, yeah, but this would really help us out. And we're really, you know, short on budget. Well, I got that. You know, I understand. Maybe not hold your event in uh, really, you know, ritzy resort in Orlando. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, the middle of Cleveland, I don't know, in the winter would save you some bucks on accommodations. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, not trying to like, but to your point, right? You know, at the end of the day, you have to honor yourself and your commitment to yourself and what you bring to the table. And sometimes that means saying no to opportunities you could otherwise say yes. I would break my neck clear across the country to go there and I would be resentful of myself because I'm not being paid for what I know that I should be paid. And so that might, you know, that might manifest in my performance. That might manifest in my preparation. That might manifest in just my self-confidence and that that's the best I can do. And I'm just not prepared to do that. So I think that those are situations that when you look at those things from, you know, a true lens of what am I going to get out of this? Is it the right thing for me to do? Is it the right opportunity for me to take advantage of? And am I really motivated to do this? Right. That's the real critical factor because anything less than, you know, you know, hundred percent, full gauge yes then you're probably costing yourself in some other capacities and that often happens in you know our mental health it help it happens in our physical health you know to, to go to the core of, of this statement okay if taking care of yourself means letting someone down then let someone down yeah and what really resonated with me about that statement is if I am going to take care of myself for my health and well-being, money aside, that could be financial well-being and, and making a living and all that. However, you know, just looking at taking care of self, whatever connotation that has for our listeners, okay, means letting someone down, then let them down. If they're let down because I'm taking care of myself, do I want any relationship at all with somebody who doesn't care about my well-being? Yeah. And it feels let down because I do. Yeah. Consider yeah. that for a moment. That's right. It's I mean, you more don't. Than disappointment. Yeah. <clears throat> if they feel let down and start with the guilt trip and the blame game and all that kind of fun stuff, when you say no, respectfully, can't do it. And that's not where I'm going right now. And they feel let down and they go after you for it. My response now, the next time it happens, is going to be, I understand you're looking out for your number one. I'm looking out for my number one. If that doesn't sit well with you, then it doesn't sit well with you. It certainly does with me. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> I, I, I agree 100% with it. Um, by the way, when I stuck to my guns, they not only paid me what my day rate was, but more. So <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you do that and now I'm enthusiastic and excited, but I do think it, to a certain degree, I think there are a lot of people that will try and get what they can from you without ever wanting to really bring anything significant to the table. And, 
you know, I know I'm talking about a paid speaking arrangement, but you know, that's true for consulting. That's true for picking your brain for your expertise. That's true from taking your time away from other things that you need to be focused on. And I think when you start guarding those things and when you start protecting it, like you said, it just feels amazing to be able to say, well, you know, I, it's not going to work. It's not the right situation. It's not the right, um, uh, the right set of circumstances for me to say yes and walking away without really feeling guilty about it. it get, and then you default back to the, Hey, their opinion, whether they think, gosh, you know, I can't believe they were that arrogant or I can't believe they said no, or gosh, why would they, you know, ever deny me? None of those things really matter when you say, Hey, look, their opinion of me in that situation is none of my business. I just am, as long as you communicate it with respect and you have justification for why you're saying no, I think that's a good justification, not just an excuse, but a legitimate one. Like, look, I protect my time. I protect my energy. I want to invest in work that excites me and motivates me. I don't want to, you know, do things just because someone's asking me to do it. When you're very clear about what it is that you have, you're actually educating people on how to interact with you. Because mm -hmm. what really transpired with that situation, not to belabor it too much, but when I said no, and I appreciate it, maybe in the future we can work together, and I left the call, I got a call within 45 minutes. Okay, this is what we're prepared to offer. And it was more than I would have probably agreed to. But the beautiful thing about it was they recognized, look, I'm holding firm because I believe 100% of what I bring to the table, and I'm not going to negotiate that. And so there has a positive impact there for you in terms of people that are truly committed to being a part of your life or your work or taking, uh, you know, some, uh, value from what it is that you bring to the table, they'll come yeah. back and sometimes in ways that you can't expect it because you've actually cultured them on how to work with you in terms of your approach. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Feels good. Yeah, it does feel good. Yeah, it feels really good. And and it and what's amazing is w one of those situations pays off and it becomes even more powerful in the next situation and your confidence grows. And before you know it, saying no, not just for the sake of saying no, but really saying no without any guilt whatsoever or feeling like you have to truly justify to the nth degree to make every excuse under the sun about why you can't do it. Just say, I'm sorry, it's just not a good fit for me right now. It's not a good time. Or like you said, let me ask you, what are you going to get from this? You know, how are you going to use what you're asking me to deliver? Because, you know, that, that, uh, that really cuts to the heart of what they're going to do. Because if, they, well, I don't really know, then, you know, you don't really know. You don't have a game plan. So how the heck would any magic that I might give you benefit you in any way, shape or form? Because you're not ready to execute. So I love this. I think it, uh, I think it's really good. Good. I look well, forward to hearing how you, uh, consider this conversation in moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And how would our audience, hopefully everybody takes something away from this, you know, how can they get more engaged or share their thoughts on our approach and sort of this tactic that we're suggesting that, you know, they, they might want to look at for their own life. How could they contribute back in, you know, comments or their perceptions of this episode? The best way is to join our Facebook group, Inquiring Minds with Donna Carlin and Steve Harper, or our YouTube channel to subscribe to that so you know when our new episodes are released. And join the conversation, you know, share what, what this meant for you, how it resonated, how you're going to use it, because it, it's wonderful for all our listeners to hear more than just our point of view. Yep. And if there's anything, obviously, that you'd like us to discuss, throw it in there as well, because we really would like to hear. And we do from our listeners, though, they'll, they'll email us. So uh, message us to say it would be great if you could do more on this subject or to expand on this is, uh, you know, always welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we love doing this, but most importantly, we're doing it for you. So if there are things that you want us to address in a future episode, we'd love to hear them because we uh, we we get inspired and motivated by the questions and the feedback we get from our audience. So we are so grateful and we don't take that lightly. We know being in season three and now starting to see all of our participation really increasing. We can tell that these episodes are really starting to resonate with folks out there. We are so grateful and, and uh, don't take 
it for granted in any way, shape or form that you are uh, dedicating a little bit of time with us. And we're so thankful for it. So we will be back again very soon with another episode of Inquiring Minds. But until then, Donna, take care. You too. Have a good one. You too.